back. Uh, today I am looking at this cottonwood tree that had fallen across a trail and I had to remove it and just kind of push it off to the side. So I'm starting here with the chainsaw, just cutting up the tree into sizable portions that I can grab with the log grapple on that mini skid loader. It's a CTX 100 and it's rated to lift right around a thousand pounds, but it can really go up to more like 1500 pounds or so. And what I'm doing here is I'm really not cutting all the way through the tree. I'm just cutting just enough to break it off. When I grab it with the grapple and give it a little twist, I can pull it right off there. So what that does for me is makes it a little less risky in, in a sense. You know, one of the major risks when you're running a chainsaw is potential energy, right? You have a lot of energy stored in the wood and when you are running a chainsaw, you're standing right next to it. So as things move and shift when they, when they fall after you cut it, you know, that's where there's the highest likelihood for potential to get hurt, right? So by me just cutting 95% of the way through the log, I can actually just go up and grab it like you saw there with the grapple and snap it off the rest of the way. And so... You know, that's a pretty big chunk there for the first grab. And right here, you see I'm throwing it in the ditch off to the side. This is just a natural resources, wildlife management area. And uh, it's not someone's backyard, right? This thing, this stuff does not need to be removed off the site. In fact, uh, it's almost better to leave it on the site so you don't lose the nutrients and uh, don't have that recycling of the organic material back into the soil if you were to remove it. So we leave all of that stuff on the site. And of course, it has some other wildlife value. You know, I, I, I'm piling this all up into a pile where rabbits can live in it and other wildlife will utilize it as well. So, you know, we're creating habitat at the same time. Uh, that grapple there, I'm actually leaving it unlocked so you can lock it in any position in a 360 degree rotation, but I actually have it unlocked. And I've kind of liked that recently. I've, I've kind of gone to doing that. It allows you to weave branches through tighter spaces. Of course, this is not really uh, working between a bunch of standing trees necessarily, but I, I think it's kind of cool to practice anyway with that rotating grapple to... Uh, just have that flexibility with the tree sort of following your drive path and not just being perpendicular to uh, your machine as you're driving along, right? And so this is just a really powerful, handy tool, the, the mini skid loader coupled with this log grapple, right? I can grab small stuff like you see I'm doing right there and grabbing that brush pile, or you can grab giant logs and just the maneuverability of these things. Uh, the tracks are only 42 inches wide. And so you can get into backyards and lift extremely heavy weight. And this is just an absolute dream for anybody that's doing tree work. Now I'm not a salesman for mini skid loaders. However, uh, I do rent out mini skid loaders in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, I have one of my own personal machines that I rent out. And uh, I do have a log grapple for it as well as uh, many other attachments. I have a brush mower, uh, different different bucket attachments. I have a large bucket, a tooth bucket, um, more of like a light materials bucket. I just sold my four-in-one bucket, so I don't really have that anymore. Um, but I also have another style of grapple, which is called a grapple rake. And that's really used more for small materials like brush if you're trying to clean up the understory of a timber or something but I, I don't really use that as much as the log grapple here but once again very powerful handy machines and and one thing you can see that I was just doing there cutting this tree is I was looking up right I'm working under some other large standing very mature trees and safety is always a priority, right? I've got my hard hat on, but the hard hat is not necessarily going to save you uh, if a sizable branch breaks off and comes down at you. So one of the biggest things when you're doing tree work is just look up, take your time, look up into the canopy and make sure that there's nothing up there known as a widow maker, right? Widow makers are things that 
you start cutting a tree and you vibrate the tree a bit and some dead branches or kind of a branch that might be hanging on loosely breaks loose and it comes down and hits you and kills you, right? That's why they call those widow makers. Uh, so I'm always looking up and watching for those and looking for any strange movement in the canopy. You know, that's the last thing I want is to be crushed by a branch or a tree falling. So definitely keep your head on a swivel and always look for that stuff and, and keep safety in mind, you know. You also have to think, when you're using heavy equipment like this, like this mini skid loader, one, I'm not in a cab, it's an open track, it's an, it's an open skid loader, I'm standing on the back of it, and if something were to come down, it could definitely hit me. Uh, but you also have to consider that, hey, I am also much more powerful running this thing. I could knock something loose, and it could come down and hurt you pretty well. So with that in mind, stay safe out there. Until next time. Nah, I'm finna take it there. This time around, I'ma make it clear. Spoke some things into the universe and they appear. I say it's worth it, I won't say it's fair. Find your purpose or you waste it.